What's up, everyone? Welcome to this edition of A Funko Popcast. I'm your host, Dylan, and guess what? I got myself a co-host this week. We got ourselves MD Shady. Hey. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we got co-hosts this week, finally. Took me long enough. A uh, month, but I mean... Anyways, uh, today's podcast, or popcast, as I like to say, uh, we're going to discuss basically the rest of February. However, we are recording this on February the 27th, so in case there is an announcement on the 28th, we'll probably mention that uh, next month, uh, right at the beginning. But uh, yeah, last week we talked about uh, the first part of February, including New York Toy Fair, but today's popcast, we're going to discuss the rest of the announcements of February, including the Emerald City Comic Con reveals. Which there's uh, a little bit of uh, cool reveals, which uh, we'll discuss about that. So uh, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start with the, uh, so on February the 16th, uh, the first non-New uh, York Toy Fair reveal was revealed, which was the Shazam Pops. So we have uh, what looks to be seven different Pops. So we got Shazam. Uh, we got Shazam in a glow-in-the-dark form, which will be exclusive to Hot Topic. As we got Matt here pulling up the photos right now, so I'm able to look at them. We got uh, Darla uh, with the purple attire and it looks like a gold cape from here. And then uh, we got Eugene, Freddy, Mary, and Pedro, which I'm pretty sure that's the exact order. Because I made sure I wrote these down with the corresponding photos. So uh, I don't really know what to say about them, except I know like Shazam is involved with DC Comics. From what I researched, yep. But uh, what do you what do you think of these Shazam pops? Um, I mean they're all right. The one thing about them is that they're kind of like the Power Rangers pops, where they kind of all look the same except for the head, at least for the anniversary uh, Power Rangers pops because they don't have the masks on. I think the only pop I'll probably pick up from this set is the Hot Topic exclusive. Sweet. Um, knowing me, probably not gonna pick up any. Not saying because I don't like Shazam or because I don't know. It's just I don't know. I just there's probably other pops that I'm probably gonna pick up. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, we'll move on to uh, February the 18th was the next announcement, and even though this announcement actually uh, we discussed on the January 2019 Funko Popcast, it was uh, one of the Pushina corns. It's actually the Funko Shop uh, Pushina corn, which is the Pushina corn with the multicolored uh tail and the the hair on top and uh i know you know quite a bit well maybe a little bit of uh pusheen yeah so uh what, what do you think of this pop i mean this pops all right all of the pusheen pops are uh pretty cool i only plan on getting two of them which is the dragon i believe and the original pusheen this one's kind of cool though it's got a nice pastel look with the colors with the two shades of pink and the like mint green it's pretty nice but i'll probably pass on it yeah uh i don't know pusheen at all so like i'm probably gonna pass on it too however uh for any pusheen fans obviously uh this would have came out february 18th like i said at 11 a.m pacific standard time 2 p.m eastern standard time on the funko shop but at this point you probably would have to find it on ebay or maybe at a convention of some sort <clears throat> and then on that very same day, uh, Funko had announced uh, a couple, oh, actually it's the same character, but two different versions of uh, Princess and the Frog, but it's a uh, character, uh, Dr. Faciller, Facilier. I think that's, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Yeah, I, but, don't, I don't remember uh, either. It's been, I think I only seen the movie like once. Yeah, but, And I don't even remember the character, but uh <clears throat> so both of these are box lunch exclusives and uh but one is a glow in the dark chase which uh i've seen many photos uh it's the the white mask that glows in the dark which it's it's pretty cool but uh any thoughts uh yeah again i'll probably pick up the glow chase uh might be a little expensive but i do like this character and i know at disney when they have the people playing each character the guy does a really good job at this character, so for that reason, I'll probably pick up the Glow Chase. Okay. Um, now we move on, uh, probably uh, what will be the majority of this podcast, uh, which 
uh, February 19th, which I'm kind of surprised that it was kind of this early that they announced Emerald City Comic Con Pops. However, uh, looking through Funko's page la uh, from uh, last year, they actually announced uh, Emerald City Comic Con uh, reveals before they announced New York Toy Fair reveals, which I found uh, very surprising, which they announced at the beginning of February uh, since the convention then was the beginning of March, but this year it's the second weekend of March where Emerald City Comic Con happens. And uh, we'll start off, uh, the first uh, set of pops is from uh, the Marvel Comics. So we have a classic version of Thor. He's got the, the nice helmet, he's got the, the hammer, and he's got his classic suit with the white, or uh, yellow boots, sorry. And uh, he's got the red cape. And then we also... Have Korath in a Star Force suit, which is a character from the upcoming Captain Marvel movie, which actually, if I'm not mistaken, comes out I think this weekend, possibly or it's next weekend. I, I can't. Re I remember it's the beginning of March the movie comes out, so I don't really know much about it, but uh, <clears throat> I think uh, they're pretty okay pops. I I, um, I like the two swords on the uh, Korath. Uh, pop and the different colored eyes uh, instead of your normal black eyes for for a pop yep. and he's got uh, <laughs> someone pointed out it looked kind of weird of uh, having the little goatee without a mouth but yeah. uh, and then uh, Thor I think if, if I had to choose between the two obviously it probably would be the classic Thor and I think uh, there was kind of a bit of a, of a, of a hype over the the Thor pop, there was quite a bit of people on the Instagram page and the Facebook page that actually like liked the classic Thor. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The classic Thor is really cool. I'm actually kind of debating about getting it. I don't collect the Marvel pops just because there's so many of them. I am a fan of Marvel, but there's just so many that I wouldn't be able to stop if I started. So I only collect some of the really cool ones. Yeah, like especially. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, there's there's so many like especially like you're a huge fan of Star Wars, but there's so many Star Wars pops. You'd like there's probably more there's probably more Star Wars pops out there than we probably have pops in our collection. Yeah, and combined exactly. and combined we probably have like just over four hundred between the two of us. Yeah. So like uh, just to keep just to have like four hundred pops just of. Like, let's say Star Wars or Marvel. It's a lot of room that's got to take up in our households. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, not to mention, I should have also mentioned, I forgot to, uh, but uh, the Sh Shazam Pops and the Princess and the Frog Pops are available now. Cool. Uh, I see, obviously, there's a lot of people who have who've gotten them. Same with the Shazam, especially... Uh, uh youtuber top pops he j he did a video just on getting the shazam pops uh which obviously the shazam pops are everywhere uh because he got his at gamestop so and then the uh princess and the frog pops are at box lunch but uh these pops the marvel pops so the thor classic if you're wondering um so all of the which i'll actually i'll mention at the end but uh the thor pop will be shared with EB Games and GameStop. And the Korath Star Force suit will be shared with Hot Topic, if you're wondering on where to get these. And then, uh, yeah, we'll move on now. <clears throat> the next one is a Game of Thrones pop, and it's Arya Stark. And uh, she's got uh, her little, like, cloak-type attire. She's got a sword and uh, kind of... Like, not really slicked back hair, but I mean, uh, hair's back, and she's got brown boots, and it's a, like a kilt-type attire. Um, it's not a bad-looking pop, like, especially, uh, um, <clears throat> like, the shirt. Well, not really a shirt, but, like, her attire is very detailed. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to, to say about that. But, yeah, you basically summed it up for me. I was going to say it's got great uh, detail. I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I've been meaning to get around to it recently. So my uh, opinion of this pop might change as I get into the show. But that's all I can say for now. Yeah, I would, I would say the same. Because I, I went in, like, I watched season one. Okay. But then uh, I didn't really watch season two. Because, like, 
as like Game of Thrones fans might notice, like <clears throat> they they don't really speak like they speak like a very complicated old like English. So like it's kind of sometimes hard to understand what they're saying, but maybe not. Uh, usually like it, uh, even for season one, I had to look at like a recap video. And then uh, someone like summed it up and it's like, okay, so I might have to do that if I want to get back into to Game of Thrones. But I mean, season one was good. But uh, yeah, will I be picking this pop? Which uh, this pop will be shared with Box Lunch. So when the Emerald City Comic Con pops come out, which I'll mention at the end of them instead of saying them each time. Uh, I, I don't think so, but I mean... Uh, yeah, Box Lunch, that's where it will be shared. So if you want to get this Game of Thrones pop, Box Lunch is the place to, to get it. Uh, the next one, one of the more, I feel, uh, exciting uh, pops. It's a uh, it's a three-pack, uh, a Harry Potter three-pack, which uh, obviously it's St. Patrick's Day themed because Emerald City, it's, it's all green and stuff. And... Uh, <clears throat> And so it's a three-pack of Ginny, Fred, and George Weasley. Uh, I'm pretty sure George is the one with the uh, the clover leaf uh, face paint on and the little like top hat. And then obviously Ginny is in the middle, or no, sorry, at the end, uh, with the uh, more uh, leprechaun hat. And then yeah, Fred is in the middle. That's what I meant to say with the yeah. face paint below his eyes, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's like showing some sort of uh, like St. Patrick's Day. Sp I remember this wasn't a movie, uh, obviously. It wasn't meant to be just like some sort of St. Patrick's Day theme. Like they actually were dressed like this in one of the movies. Um, I can't remember which one. I, I guaranteed if I asked uh, our buddy Robbie, he'd probably know because he's more into Harry Potter than probably the both of us. Yeah. So um, this is probably one of the more exciting pops in my opinion. Like when I looked at this, I'm like, okay. Like some of the other ones, I'm like, okay, they're they're all right. But I mean, yeah. What what do you think? Um, pardon my yawn. Um, <laughs> they're they're pretty cool. That's just about all I have to say about them. Yeah, nothing, nothing too much to describe. I might have like hit the nail in the coffin, yeah. possibly on, on exactly what. Uh, the detail in that is and uh that pop or i should say that three pack will be shared with barnes and nobles so Makes sense. uh yeah a lot of actually the majority of i've noticed the majority of harry potter pops get uh shared with barnes and nobles except i think uh the new york comic-con exclusive professor coral was shared with fye but this is going to be shared with barnes and nobles so if you're looking for this barnes and nobles is the place for when it gets released uh, the next one, actually, uh, what I think you'll be uh, kind of pumped about because you like the game. And actually, in the, the last few podcasts, I'd always mention about how you like Overwatch. Yeah. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a Sombra? Sombra? Sombra. Sombra. It's a glitch version. And uh, I could tell by kind of gl like her uh, fingertips. It's kind of like a, like a glitch type. And then uh, her hair. I like the detail of the hair of how it's like like dark green and it kind of goes light and then white and then like uh <clears throat> little cuts in her eyebrows and then uh just the whole like green attire it's uh, a very nice looking pop yeah exactly um just like the rest of the overwatch um like exclusives or variants they're all different skins from each character and I have the Hot Topic exclusive, and I have the normal version, and I will definitely be picking this one up. I have about 40, around there, 40 Overwatch Pops. I'm missing, I'd say about 10 or 12 of the exclusives, but yeah, I'll definitely get this one. And uh, for all the Overwatch fans, including uh, MD Shady right here, uh, Sombra, the glitch version, will be shared with Amazon. Perfect. Which... Uh, I don't know. I find every time I see like an Amazon, it's like mostly like Amazon in the States. I don't know if it'll show in Amazon Canada. I've never really shopped at Amazon. It might, it might show up there like probably, but like, I don't know. But yeah, Amazon is where you will find uh Sombra, uh, the glitch version. Uh, if you want to get her, uh, the next one, uh, is a gears of war pop, which, uh, there was quite a bit of uh, Gears of War pops that were announced last month for uh, London Toy Fair's reveals. 
uh or actually where was it just i think yeah it was london toy fair reveals last month that they announced some uh gears of war pops but they announced one uh this month for emerald city comic-con and i would assume it's pronounced general ram yeah, with two a's yeah. Uh, I do like the detail of this. Uh, I like the orange eyes. I like uh, the bottom of his teeth uh, going up and like the detail right on the head of like, I would assume it's like some sort of like scalp or uh, not scalp. Uh, what the heck's the word? Like uh, like a scale type yeah. thing. And like just the uh, <clears throat> the suit, the suit itself, uh, it's very detailed and uh as I as I look at this, yeah, the this even the gloves and of what looks to be some sort of uh, dagger. And uh, if you're wondering, there's some notifications going on on MD's phone right now, but it's all good. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to really say about this. It's just, I guess, detailed, pretty detailed. Yeah, this. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year this comes up on some people's uh, top ten or top twenty pops for detail or whatever because there's definitely a lot going on with it and it looks pretty nice uh probably won't be getting it because i've never really played gears of war all that much so i so like if i played it there could be a possibility because i might know the character but i don't so i'm probably not gonna get it um and this pop will be uh it's actually it's not really surprising that this pop will be shared with eb games slash gamestop considering it is from a video game so it makes sense and uh and yeah all right um now the next uh the next one we're at is uh kind of taking a break just by one pop for the uh emerald city comic-con uh it is a the weekly funko shop exclusives uh which i think the week prior or it might have been this week actually or not the week after yeah it is never mind i'll mention what i meant uh when i get to the uh basically the last pop that we talk about um but we have a uh our weekly funko shop exclusives that they post um sometimes it's pops sometimes it's vinyls sometimes it's dorbs but uh on february 20th which was obviously a Wednesday. That's when they usually post. It's a uh, a Funko Shop exclusive uh, Light Fury, and it's all uh, glittered. So I know there was a, a I think like a couple Light Furies uh, that were released in 2018, or it was released. Actually, it might have been released this, but it was announced in 2018 though uh, for the uh, the How to Train Your Dragon Hidden World movie, which is now in theaters. Which if you listen to the last podcast i had mentioned like it comes out the friday because i recorded it on tuesday but when you heard it it came out that day um i've seen photos on like instagram stuff of like up close and it the glitter is pretty cool um i like the blue eyes and then uh i guess that's about it yeah this is a nice pop i probably won't pick it up but i do love the how to train the dragon series and i don't know they they did a good job on this one, I think. All right. Um, now we're going to go back to uh, Emerald City Comic Con pops, where uh, the next one uh, is a Dragon Ball Z pop, and it's actually a six-inch Poranga. That's, that's okay, cool, because Matt's also a fan of Dragon Ball Z. So uh, we'll probably get uh, his rundown first on the, uh, on the pop. Sure, I mean, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of Dragon Ball Z, you could say. I'm wearing a shirt of uh, Perfect Cell right now. This pop is really nice. I'm yet to get the, um, oh my god, why can't I think of his name? Shenron. I haven't got any of the Shenron pops yet, but me and my roommate have uh, been thinking about buying a couple of them, like the gold version, and this pop is just, it's really nice. There's a lot of cool detail with the spikes and all those little, like, warts on his body his tail's all twisted and of course you got the seven dragon balls at the bottom and i'll definitely pick up this pop and uh i guess you'd have to say it's uh it's very like mint you know like the hand <laughs> i'm coughing yeah. i'm coughing yeah, his little that. uh little hand gesture right there it's like it's decent yeah if any of you guys are uh looking up the photo of this right now we just uh turn it upside down a little bit and then uh ooh, got him 
<laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, for a guy who doesn't really uh, watch Dragon Ball Z, talking about myself, um, I think it's very detailed. It is one of the more detailed pops of the announcements uh, for Emerald City Comic Con, uh, of course. I like the little Dragon Balls at the bottom. And uh, very detailed on the uh, on the muscular form of this pop. And then the red eyes and the little horns that come out. It's uh, And it's very nice in color, the amount of colors they've used in this pop. Uh, this pop will be shared, which I'm not really surprised because they did this with the, the Grade 8 Vegeta for New York Comic Con uh, in October. Uh, this will be shared with Hot Topic. So if you want to get this pop, uh, this will be... Uh, at hot topic uh when the release when we talk about we'll talk about the release date after um now we'll move on after uh this uh this pop it's a uh from i think it's an anime if i'm yeah. not mistaken fairy tale and it's a uh, good if i'm not mistaken with uh as it i guess uh like they described it as good with dragon scales but they actually released a photo of like the pop in its box and it says like uh, Gajil Dragon Force. So like it's, I don't exactly know like what the exact thing to call it is, but it's like between those two things because Funko said one thing, but like the box says another. So like it could be like the person who like posted it online, like they might have not really known, but like uh, Funko themselves on the box says Dragon Force. But anyways, uh. It's got a little spiky hair. The skin's like a... It looks very, like, metallic -y, like, light bluish color. Uh, and then uh, it's got, like, a, a royal blue, like, uh, outfit with, like, white pants and uh, royal blue uh, boots. Um, I can't really tell. I don't think he's got anything in his hands. It's just, like, opened up. Yeah. And then uh, looks like he's got some sort of, like, piercings on his, like, eyebrows or something. It looks like piercings to me, or that maybe yeah. just, like... Metal studs. Yeah, metal <laughs> studs, and, uh... I, I, what do you gotta say about this? Um, at first, when I seen it, I thought, wow, what an ugly pop. Um, I haven't watched Fairy Tale. I've also been meaning to get around to it, but... So I don't know anything about this character. I don't know if it looks accurate to what it actually looks like. But the more I look at the pop, it is pretty nice. There are a lot of those little minor details that kind of bring it together. Okay, and uh, Gajil will be shared with EB Games and GameStop. So uh, it's obviously for us, it's it's probably the closest access we got to any pop store is, uh, is EB Games and that. But the second closest is probably Hot Topic. Um, so now uh, move on to the next one. Uh, actually, yeah, true. Once we get our nice, uh, daily dose of, uh, well, not daily, but I mean, uh, Canadian dose of Tim Hortons. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> daily dose. Um, we got some DC Comics pops, which, uh, the first one, uh, I cannot pronounce the name at all. Like, I wrote the name down. Let's see here. And, like, I don't even know, like... So, spell M-X-Y-Z-P-T-L-K. That's how it's spelled. So, I'm just going to say Mr. M. But if you can get this name, that'd be awesome. I'm assuming the X-Y-Z has a different pronunciation than what it looks like. So, I'm assuming it'd be Mr. M Ms. Mizpick? I don't know. I, I, I knew for some reason I should have searched this up on YouTube. Or something. Because I know I searched up uh, the character. So I'm going to say Mr. M for now. Is a, a nemesis of Superman. And then we got uh, Black Canary. Which is a character in the Flash series. Uh, and uh, you may see in the photo. There's also like a. Well it looks to be a five star figure. But it's because I didn't want to get the separate photos. Uh, I just wanted to get the cool photos. With the cool backgrounds that they used for the Emerald City Comic Con pops. Um. We got, uh, so Mr. M, he's got his, uh, little purple top hat. He's got some, like, spiky gray hair, and he's in, like, some sort of, like, meditating, like, cross-legged, crisscross applesauce form. Uh, I don't know what he's about to do, because I don't really know, I don't know nothing about Mr. M. But, uh, Black Canary, uh, got a little, uh, got her suit on. Uh, she's got boots and what looks to be, uh, some sort of, like, uh, 
like uh, the fishnet like leggings, yeah. and she's got the blonde hair, and then uh, yeah, I I don't really. What do you got to say about this? Uh, the Mister M pop looks really cool. He's like floating, and they got the clear base. It's actually, a, for how simple it is, it's a very very nice pop, honestly, and that's probably the highlight of these three. Yeah, um, and uh, so now uh, Mr. M, uh, when these pops get released, will be shared with Entertainment Earth, which is actually, I think, the first of a couple. Uh, actually, that might be the only Entertainment Earth pop that uh, ECC will be sharing with them, is Mr. M. And then Black Canary will be shared with Walgreens. So that's the first we've talked about of Walgreens uh, for those for the ECCC pops. Um, now we'll move on to a couple exciting pops. This is probably, like, the biggest of the hypes of, like, uh, of ECCC, um, which, uh, the first one is Pillsbury Doughboy, which, if, if you forgot, Pillsbury Doughboy was actually part of the 12 Days of Christmas, uh, Funko Shop exclusives, uh, originally, uh, back in December, so only a couple months ago, but now they're doing a new Pillsbury Doughboy holding a shamrock cookie just in time for St. Patrick's Day, and uh, then we got, uh, uh, this probably got, like, definitely top three hype of, like, ECCC pops, because when the Sour Patch Kids pops come out, came out, uh, everyone's wanting to know why they didn't make a lime Sour Patch Kid, which is the one we're obviously talking about now. Um, and uh, I guess now, uh, yeah, now it's out. So we'll talk more about actually Pillsbury first. So Pillsbury, um, he's got his little chef hat and he's even got the little detailed Pillsbury logo. And he's got the, the very dark blue eyes and the nice smiley face like Pillsbury should. And he's got the shamrock cookie. Um, what do you guys say about the Pillsbury? The Pillsbury Pop is awesome. The first one was amazing. They just they just did such a good job for how little detail. But it, that's usually how it is with the good pops is that there's not a lot of detail to do and they just come out amazing because it looks exactly how it should. The cookie is a nice little detail that I like. And if I can get my hands on this pop, I will definitely grab it. And uh, that pop... Uh... Unfortunately for us Canadians, it'll be hard to get because this pop is shared with Funko Shop. Yeah. So uh, we'd have to probably find it on eBay for a really high price or at a convention for still a high price. Maybe if you can uh, negotiate with the person to get it lower. But uh, And then the Lime Sour Patch Kids. So obviously uh, basically the same as the normal uh, Sour Patch Kids. They got the little like the one color detail. Uh, with the little like white sparkles to indicate like the sour of the the sour specks of the uh, <clears throat> of the candy, and uh, I know a lot of people don't like the idea of like the black eyes because like when you look at a sour patch kid like they don't have black eyes it's just the same color as the rest of the, but I guess you know they they gotta add eyes so I guess they have that. Um, uh... I don't really have much to say because I'm not wasn't really a fan of the Sour Patch Kids pops to begin with. I guess like the the one I would have liked the most was like the uh, I think it's the the blue raspberry one because it actually looked more like a like a Sour Patch Kid candy. While like let's say the lemon, which was probably my least likely, like you couldn't really tell because like yellow is such like a a bright color, so like it doesn't show like the specks of like the sour. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like these pops. This live one's pretty cool. I do hate the fact that the eyes are black. I don't know why they just didn't make it the same color as the rest of it. You'd still see the detail in it. But uh, I'm probably going to pick up two sets of these five pops, I believe, are in the set. Yeah, including the, the Lime Sour Patch Kid. It'd definitely be the the fifth one because there would be... Uh, so you got Blue Raspberry, you got Red Berry, you got Orange, and you got uh, Lemon. Yeah. And then there's the lime now. But now that I see it, I see that it's limited to a thousand pieces, so rest in peace to that idea of getting two of them. I will try to get one for myself, and for the basic set, I'm going to pick up two sets and 
give a set to my buddy Zach because he is a huge fan of the Sour Patch Kids. Yeah. Um, and uh, good thing you mentioned about the thousand pieces, and that's because this Lime Sour Patch Kid will only be exclusive at Emerald City Comic Con. So you have to travel all the way to Seattle, Washington uh, to get to the Funko booth to get this pop until, you know, someone's putting up for maybe a couple hundred on eBay. And then, yeah, that's about it. Um, the next pop, actually, it's a. I was really, like, excited about this pop, even though that I did, like, little known fact, I think it was four, three weeks ago, was the first time I watched Lion King. Really? Yeah. So, like, wow. so like me seeing, uh, which obviously we're talking about, uh, Bonsai Shenzi and Ed, uh, the hyenas from Lion King, three-pack, I'm like, sweet. And I was thinking, like, you know, Lion King's fans would be so pumped about this, uh, considering, like, uh, uh, the live-action movie comes out in July. So I it's understandable that they're coming out with uh, more Lion King pops because I thought maybe even the the six that they released for the the live action movie would be the only ones, but now they're adding the hyenas, which I don't know exactly. I haven't done that much research to see if they actually made like hyena pops before, like singulars, or if like maybe this is the first time hyena the hyenas are getting their own Funko pops. Yeah, I mean that is a good question. I think. I think it is the first ones because I don't think in the like the original Disney lineup like they have any of the hyenas no, but these these three are cool. I'll probably get them as, along with the other new Lion King pops that just came out because they're all really nice. Yeah, I think honestly, like, uh, actually, I'll just I'll mention that at the end of uh, what I think like probably like top three of like the the Emerald City Comic Con pops I'd buy if I had a choice of any three. So, anyways, I do love this. The one thing I really like about, like, and I've thought about this last night, actually. When you make pops of, like, villains, how they started to do, like, this, like, yellowy, orangey eyes. Like, I remember, like, uh, the first, the earliest, they just recently started this, I believe. Uh, and I think, like, the one I noticed the most uh, the, for another pop that has that is the, like, Revenge of the Sith anakin skywalker yeah, pop because yeah. it has those eyes and uh it's a really i'm thinking of getting that pop uh which i think that's a walgreens exclusive mm -hmm. but uh yeah i love uh i actually don't even know what order it is for i don't know if it's the exact order for uh i know i wrote them down in the order of what the box shows like when you see the photo of like the pops in like the box themselves because yeah. they're on the Funko blog. So I don't know if it's the right order, but, um, but I know the one has really good detail with the teeth and the tongue sticking out hungry for some lines and, uh, their ears are sticking up and, uh, the facial expressions are absolutely awesome. So, uh, those Lion King pops will be shared with Amazon. So it's a decent outlet. You don't have to, you know, obviously it's not like, it's a good thing they're not like Emerald City Comic Con. Like you can only get them there. It's actually shared uh, with someone, and not even like Funko Shop, which it, it it's kind of surprising they they wouldn't put these on like a Funko Shop, kind of like they're doing with uh, Flocked Bullseye, which I'm kind of still very heated about. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Amazon. That's where they're gonna be shared. So if you want to get these uh, Lion King three pack pops uh, to add. Uh, to your Lion King collection, Amazon is a place to get these. Next part of the Disney, uh, so they they announced this in a, in another pop uh, with the uh, Disney announcements, uh, which you can swipe now. Oh, we're not doing these guys. No, I, I'm only talking about like pops. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just those. Uh, yeah, what Matt was talking about was the the Ducktales. Uh, the I think those are five star figures. I'm. For no, sure. or no, are they... they're just the the Funko like action figure sets, like that Darkwing Duck chase that I have. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I just talk about just pops. Yeah, usually. Okay. Uh, but um, but yeah, the next one. Now we got the photo up, and it should be up while I'm editing this too. Um, we got uh, another Incredibles two pop, and it's the character Void, which actually I remember this character. Um. 
uh, basically, uh, she just, like, sets different, like, I guess it would be, like, vortex type deals like you could just move from one area to another by like just set. it's kind of like the, the video game like portal yeah yeah like sets different portals that's the word i should have looked for um and then uh yeah she's even got like her hands are ready to just shoot at like a wall to to go out of or something and then uh she's got the i like the detail of like the the circle around her and then uh they basically like it like, it's detailed, but it's not detailed, but it's basically, like, bang on about, like, it's basically, like, exactly how uh, Void looks. And I like when they do characters, and they even did it with the Incredibles Pops. I like when they have characters uh, with masks on, and they do the white eyes mm-hmm. uh, instead of just the black eyes. Because the black eyes would look weird. Um, but, uh Yeah. Yeah, this this pop is really cool. Uh, just like I've been saying, they keep it simple, but add those minor details, and it just it's bang on. And I'll probably get this pop. And uh, it's also kind of an easy access for a uh, majority of people because this pop is being shared with Walmart. Mm. So Walmart, just a nice simple store that's probably in majority of the cities. Uh, I know there are some cities uh, that don't have WalMarts, and there's some that have twelve. Yep. <laughs> and uh Toronto probably. Yeah. Um but uh yeah, so uh that'll be shared with Walmart. Uh and uh how many Oh yeah, okay, we still got quite a bit left. But uh all right, so the next pop uh we got a Rick and Morty pop and it's a uh, shirtless jaguar which uh, I watched all 3 seasons of Rick and Morty and I don't remember this character at all. Really? Yeah, like uh so the details on him, he looks like he's basically like got like five o'clock shadow, obviously, because he's probably in like prison or something and he hasn't had time to shave or can't shave because he's in prison. And uh, he's got the, the shackles on his feet and obviously broken shackles on his wrists because the chains are just hanging there. He looks like he's just ready to just like knock someone out. And uh, he's got like the one, it looks like just a one eyebrow. Just to make that expression. Or maybe he has a unibrow. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. That's all I really gotta say. Yeah, I mean, I don't really watch Rick and Morty that often. I know everyone and their mother loves the show. But, uh, I don't know. I just couldn't really get into it. This pop's alright. I just find the Rick and Morty pops to look a little weird. The only one I have is Pickle Rick. Just because, why not? Yeah, it's, it's like a... It's become like a like a phenomenon of like memes and stuff like oh pickle Rick mm-hmm. and and all that. I have uh, what do I have in the? I've only I don't have the whole series because obviously that's another one of those series that like there's so many of them like I don't want to collect all of them. That's like me with like majority of even television pops. Sometimes I only get like two of of like a television like especially like uh, a big example uh, Stranger Things. Uh, you have basically the whole collection besides maybe like ten. Or five. Maybe, maybe ten. Probably, yeah. Probably about five. Yeah. And, uh, like, and I only have two. Like, I got Dustin and Nancy, and I'm, yeah. like, fine with that. Actually, there is another one I'm thinking of picking up soon, which I think is going to be, uh, or wanting to get, because I'm just thinking, like, that kind of looks cool. And you actually have it. It's uh, Max with the Michael Myers mask. Yeah, that's a that's a sweet pop. And, uh, but, yeah, this, uh, this Rick and Morty pop of, uh, where is he? Jaguar, shirtless will be shared with Hot Topic, which is understandable because I there's a lot of Rick and Morty pops that get shared to Hot Topic. So it's understandable that this is going to Hot Topic. So when the pops come out, though that one will be at Hot Topic. Uh, next one, uh, we're, now it's uh, to the, I guess I think it's like television or it's a, uh, I don't really, I didn't even write down exactly what it was a part of. Yeah, it's still part of the television lineup, I'm pretty sure, because it was in the same post as the Jaguar. Um, and I should have mentioned, this is also now February 21st that this set of uh, pops uh, were released, including the Jaguar. Uh, this is Carmen San Diego. Now, there's already been, I think, one or two that have come out. I actually seen one yesterday at our local EB Games, uh, just chilling there. Uh, yeah, Carmen San Diego, and it's a diamond collection uh version all glittery uh it's got the red hat uh 
It's got a red uh, trench coat type and uh, red heels and black gloves and it's all glittery and stuff and uh yeah i don't really got because i've never really heard about carmen san diego until they came out with pops yeah i'm in the same boat i'm assuming that it's something to do with disney because isn't like the diamond collection just disney pops um no because they had uh and actually i mentioned it on the last they had the uh harley quinn diamond collection right and hot yeah. topic the hmm. pink and white one That's uh weird. so the, and that was dc comics uh which is owned by warner brothers yeah. i'm pretty sure so uh yeah um then that pop will be shared with uh fye which uh i'm assuming everyone knows fye at this point is known as for your entertainment uh that's what it stands for and uh which they i checked on the website they got some pretty sweet deals including a wwe two pack for five bucks which i kind of that's pretty sweet yeah i just wanted to point that out so they got some pretty sweet deals right now and who knows they might have some pretty sweet deals when you uh you know click this pop on the uh the checkout for when they get released so uh yeah that's carmen san diego next pop is for uh scott pilgrim in the world uh, in the photo, you'll see uh, Pop Pez's, but we won't talk about that. We'll just talk about the Pop itself, which is uh, Ramona with a mallet. And uh, Ramona's got blue hair. It's got goggles on her head. She's got this pretty sweet mallet. Probably wants to fight Thor or something. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, could if she wanted to. Uh, she's got these brown boots. And uh, I think she's got like a star on her shirt of some sort. Or wait, no, that's a purse? Yeah, it's on like a bag. So yeah, it's like a bag. And then I think part of her shirt, she's got like stripes on it too. So, uh, yeah, I don't, re- I've never seen Scott Pilgrim, so what? I can't really, yeah, I haven't. So I can't really say any, so I guess you can talk about like this pop since you've So the seen... first thing I wanted to mention was that you said Scott Pilgrim in the world, I think you said. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Yeah. It's Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I think you said in the world. I, c- I could be mistaken. Just hearing it could have yeah. It, I could have maybe like sometimes I'll say something and it sounds like I said something, but I don't yeah. Know. Um, yeah. I mean, this pop is awesome. Uh, I really want all the Scott Pilgrim pops, but like the whole series is all exclusives, pretty much. So yeah, it, it's hard to collect. Um, what that? I think his name was Lucas. That was the one that was at Fan Expo. Okay. Yeah. 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 He was. Uh, and he was actually one of the pops that like was like selling the least. It was like the second least selling pop yeah, besides which is uh besides uh the most oh man, I still can't stand that pop, the the Mega Man eight bit. That's like yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Enough eight bit pops, Funko, if you're listening. I mean the only true the only eight bit pop I have, which actually makes sense for an eight bit, is the Space Invaders. Like yeah. the one. Uh but, uh, yeah, that pop, uh, is exclusive to, once again, that's, I love how you mentioned about, oh yeah, they're basically all exclusive. This one's Funko Shop exclusive. Oh, so course. that's, so that's, that's going to be shared on there. Uh. Are we, uh, talking about these Pez? No. No? Uh, okay. You, you feel like you want to talk about the Pez? Even uh, uh, this uh, is just a, just, a Funko Pop? Well, they're Pop, Pop Pez. Well, I mean, I guess you get. The floor's yours for Pop Pez. <laughs> okay. Um, they're cool. I'll probably get the the pink one just because I've just started collecting the Pop Pez and they're pretty nice and I like that one. That's about all I wanted to say. Okay. So like 10 seconds just. Yeah. <laughs> um, one more thing that I wanted to say about Scott Pilgrim though actually is that I can't believe you haven't seen the movie. It's so No, good. I haven't. Um, is it on Netflix? I could watch it? It might be. Okay, well. But what I was going to say is that there's a skateboarding scene in the movie and it was actually filmed at Casa Loma in Toronto which I've been there and I've like walked like there's a scene in the movie where the one ex-boyfriend does like a grind down this rail and I walked on that staircase and I thought that was pretty cool that it was filmed there which I didn't I didn't know for a long time a lot of like I even seen uh what was it obviously there's no pops of this but I just wanted to mention about like I seen a video recently of like uh it was like uh, for that Sherlock movie with like Will Ferrell and yeah. uh, they were talking about uh, they're guessing like movies of like they've been in just by like one photo 
and uh, I already forget the guy's name. The guy who was like Cal Naughton Jr. in Talladega Nights. Yeah. Um, I forgot his name. John or, or Wayne name. Casey or whatever it is. Yeah. He was mentioning about how he fil- He was in a movie called Chicago and it was filmed in Toronto. Oh. So. Yeah, of course. Just a little, just a little known fact that, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, yeah. Next Pops. It's a, uh, a two pack. This was rumored actually. Uh, a couple weeks prior, someone leaked this. Actually, right after uh, New York Toy Fair, they leaked this pop, and it's a, a two pack of Michael Bolton, Bolton, sorry, and Samir, uh, for Office Space, and we got uh, assuming because uh, I've never seen Office Space either. Uh, I know, disappointing, but uh, I'm assuming Michael Bolton is uh, the guy with the baseball bat. Uh, and, uh, looks like, uh, him and Samir are both, are having a fight, and clearly they're beaten up on some sort of printer, uh, which is very detailed on a beaten up printer, uh, and then we got, like, uh, Samir's tie just, like, waving off, like he's, like, uh, swinging at it, uh, swinging at, like, not the, pr- well, yeah, maybe the printer, but, uh, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, it's pretty de- I th- I think for some reason what stands out is that printer for some reason. I don't know why. The printer or maybe it's a fax scanner or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why that's sticking out to me the most. Besides, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's a nice touch. This is a nice two-pack of pops. And I honestly think if they would have put, like, a base and a background on it, they could have just made it into a movie moments because it's a scene in itself. Yeah. That's that's true. Um, so, yeah, these... Uh, this office two pack will be shared with Target. Oh, Target. They they just love to share stuff with like Target, especially since uh when this when this podcast gets released, it will be the same day as Target Con. So uh so March first on Friday. Uh so it's like, okay, yeah, Target. <laughs> but uh yeah, this will be shared with Target. Uh now the next one. Oh, another one I can't really pronounce. I'm just gonna say Grishnok. Yeah, it's probably Grishnok. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. This is probably about right. Uh, Lord of the Rings pop, uh, very detailed. Uh, once again, you know, I like the pops that don't have the normal black eyes. It's just like a different colored eyes. Uh, the facial expressions. Uh, it's got some sort of like uh, walk. I don't know if that's a like a walking stick or like a, a knife of some sort. Yeah, if we can zoom in on that, it looks like a knife. Now it, as I look it, at yeah, it, yeah, it looks more like a old rustic sword. Yeah, and like uh. The whole armor is, like, super detailed. Like, uh, yeah, like, even, like, the little, like, like not kilt, but, like, little overlap piece, like, got very detailed on it and the boots and everything. Just, this pop's pretty detailed. Um, like I said, it's probably one of the more detailed pops of uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Um, and, uh... Yeah, I, I, I've only, I've seen Lord of the Rings a couple times. Uh, once again, I don't remember this character. That's how long it's been since I've seen yeah, uh, Lord of the, the Rings. Way. So I don't really have much to say. I don't know if you do, but... Yeah, the only it's very detailed. I know my buddy Sky, he's been watching the Lord of the Rings over this past week, and he'll probably... I'll show him this when he comes over later, and he'll probably really enjoy it. But besides that, I'll probably pass on it, even though it is a nice-looking pop. And uh, this Lord of the Rings pop will be shared with Barnes and Nobles. So it's the same place where that uh, Harry Potter three pack uh, is going to be shared. That is where uh, the Grishnok pop will be shared with. Yeah, it only makes sense to do the like book pops. True. Too. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't think about that. Wow, mind blown. To be honest, <laughs> like the book. Yeah like move books that have become movies and they're shared with like a bookstore mm-hmm. oh man yeah mind blown part of the day of the podcast um so now we go to uh i think it's also a i think this is a movie yeah it's a movie it's still part of the movie uh lineup uh because this was in the same post as office space and lord of the rings it's uh a movie called uh life aquatic yep and uh it's character uh steve zizu i'm assuming that's how it's pronounced I think so. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, it's played by Bill Murray. I could be wrong, but I think it's played by Bill Murray. Bill Murray? From Ghostbusters? No, I know Bill Murray. Okay. I'm okay. just like, <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine him with like, with the description we're getting, like a, like a red hat. It looks like a, 
yeah, it's just like a like a red like uh, beanie type. Uh, well, not beanie, but I mean toque. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, type with a gray beard, and he's holding a, a ship in his hand. I like the detail in the ship. Um, and he's got uh, he's got white with yellow lace sneakers, and he I don't know what he's got on his leg. He's got something on his uh, right leg. It looks like a gun strap. Ah, true. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to search up after. That's Bill Murray in that movie. But uh, yeah, I think the and I think also the movie is called Life Aquatic with Steve Zuzu. But I didn't like yeah. write that down because like it's obviously talking about that character, so there was like really no point of saying that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I like the I like the toque. I like the ship. Uh, it's an it's an overall looks. Uh, it's a pretty cool pop. Yeah, I honestly really like this pop. I haven't seen the movie. I want to because it looks really good. But uh, yeah, he's got like Steve on his name tag, and he's got the wrinkles and like the detail in the hat. It looks all knitted. It's a good and stuff. thing we have like all this on like your phone because I'd never even noticed that that name tag. Yeah. In the pictures. Yeah, so now we yeah, got, like, a super... Good quality phone I got here. Yeah, and then uh, even, like, even the toque, like, you could tell it's, like, a knitted toque. It's, yeah. like, like a super knitted toque. Like, if, like, like, uh, hey, grandson, you want a toque? Like, no offense to grandmas out there, but... <laughs> do they... So I'm thinking about if there's, like, American viewers right now. Do they even... They don't call... Uh, they probably... Toques, they probably call them beanies, right? So like early, like, so I technically, so I technically was was right when I said a beanie at yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. But then I corrected myself because you know I gotta be Canadian. But I mean, okay, so Americans, all right. He's wearing a beanie. Canadians, he is wearing a toque. He's wearing a red toque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking like American, like, what the hell is a toque? <laughs> It's like when we were drinking our Tim Hortons. What's Tim Hortons? Even though they've expanded Tim Hortons into the States. Yeah, but I mean... unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, true. Bought by Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta expand it. Um, yeah, uh, this bop, uh, you know, shared with Funko Shop. It's one of those items that's got to be shared with Funko Shop. They can't just bring it to various outlets. Well, uh, shared outlets uh, that's accessible. Yeah, my, my question is, is... Have they done, like, commons for this set? Because I believe there's two, like, main characters in this movie, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know why they would just do one of them I, and I, make it a Funko Shop exclusive. Yeah, I don't know if, uh... Yeah, I... Because, like, I didn't look back on, like... I don't even remember them announcing, like, Life Aquatic... It might have been, like, announced, but I don't remember it. Yeah. So I can't really say, like, oh, yeah, this is the first Life Aquatic pop. Uh, it... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like, once again, I still got a search if that's Bill Murray or not. Yeah. I'll actually, uh, if I remember, I will do that in the next podcast. The first thing we talk about is whether that was Bill Murray or not. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, yeah, Funko Shop exclusive. And uh, I will announce the date of when these pops are, like, expected to be released uh, right after these next pops, which are now Funko Pops. Like, it's, like, part of, like, the Funko lineups, which... Two of them are, uh, they're both Freddy Funkos and they're holding fish. But one of them, uh, which uh, is Freddy Funko wearing a gold crown uh, and he's got just like a normal like like fish. Like it's not a colored fish like the next one we'll talk about. But uh, he's got like a very light uh, brown pants and very dark brown pants shoes and he's got like a blue bow tie and he's got suspenders on and then the next one is a freddy funko but this is what i meant by colored because this fish is blue uh he's wearing more of a blue and yellow attire and he's wearing like a silver crown it looks like and uh it's basically the same like pop as the other one except it's just different colors and that we'll actually mention about uh or just now before i go into detail about or uh before we get our opinions uh, is Finn Du Chomp. That's the that's the next one. Uh, which uh, is part of that uh, the Splastic Plastic uh, series Spastic of plastic yeah, yeah the Splastic Pat. I can't say it. Whatever. I'll let you say. It. Spastic Plastic. Spastic Plastic. I'm using the L for both. So it's yeah. Spastic Plastic. There we go. I got it. Uh, series which uh, I I kicked that off actually on last the last podcast because uh i forgot to mention it in the january one because it was the last one announced which was that uh teal uh psycho shriner 
So it's a part of that type of uh, dealio. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll start off with that uh, that uh, Funko, Freddy Funko with the fish, the first one. Um, that's me. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm... Um, I love this pop. To be honest, as a as a big fishing guy. I, th I think this pops really cool. The fish there is actually a rainbow trout, I'm pretty sure. And Look at that detail. I'm, <laughs> he knows the fish. <laughs> I'm, I'm pissed that it's only a thousand pieces because I don't have a Freddy Funko, and this is finally one where I'm like, wow, that's the one I'm going to get for my first Freddy Funko. So I'm really hoping I can pick this up because that's, that's super nice. The uh, second one is basically just a variant again. It's If I can get that one... If I can't get the first one, I'll probably get that one, just because it's still a cool pop. And then, this Spastic Plastic, what'd you say his name was? It was, uh, Findu Chomp. Findu Chomp. When I seen this one come out, I thought, wow, that's awesome. You got, like, there's a bite in the surfboard, which is really cool. He's got the bucket hat on with the with the hook. What, yeah, I was about to say, zoom in on that, uh, like, right beside the hook. What is that? Like, button? I think it says... Beach bum, I think is what Beach it says. Bum. Yeah, the little button on his hat. And then I thought this hilar this detail was hilarious. How he's got a human tooth on his necklace, whereas most surfer dudes would have like a shark tooth on their necklace. Yeah, I, I yeah I didn't think about that, but now as I think. And then about of course hat. he's got the like Hawaiian floral shorts. Yeah. I'm this one's three thousand pieces, so it's a little easier to pick up. I really hope I can get this one too because I've been a fan of spastic plastic before i've been even a fan of funko i didn't even realize i used to collect the figures and then i found out that it was the same company and i was like wow yeah um so now uh okay so both the first uh freddy funko with the fish and that Findu chomp are only going to be available at the convention itself so which is why it's going to be like no! <laughs> Um, so now, uh, that's why it's going to be, uh, why they have the thousand pieces for the one, 3000 for the other. Uh, so you might have to, we have to find it on eBay or some sort, uh, for most likely, uh, since we can't travel to Seattle. Uh, and, uh, the second Freddy Funko, uh, with the blue fish, uh, is going to be exclusive to Funko shop. So it's easier, except still for us Canadians, we still can't get access to any of these. Why like, you right got to do me dirty like this Funko? <laughs> uh, and yeah, so now, uh, since we're done talking about the Emerald city comic con pops, uh, it was basically announced. I think it says it on like their Funko blog, but, uh, these pops are going to be released the day before Emerald City Comic Con, so March 14th. So all the pops we discussed for Emerald City Comic Con and all their like shared places, uh, whether it's online or in store, are supposed to be released uh, March 14th, which is the day, obviously the day before, which would be a Thursday, because the convention, I'm pretty sure, is Friday to Sunday, uh, the 15th to the 17th of March. Um, except sometimes, uh, it, it could change cause I know New York, uh, New York city comic con or New York. Yeah. New York comic con NYCC. Yeah. Um, some of them got released the day before. Some of them had to get changed to the, to the Friday, which I noticed oh, with okay. the hot topic, I had to go on the Friday instead of the Thursday. It, and then I think Amazon and FYE got to release theirs on the Thursday. Of course. Cause I know also I ordered the, the pop rides, uh, pizza planet. Uh, truck and I had to uh, sit at my computer at like quarter to 12 so midnight on a Thursday waiting for that link to go up at midnight and order that pop which my computer almost crashed that day which was pop nuts. was this it was the the pop rides pizza planet oh okay like so many people were probably on that website the same time as me like it yeah, was ready to crash and I wanted to also get the the metallic uh army man funko that same like day but i'm like i need to just get to the checkout right now or else my computer's <laughs> crashing and they're selling out but uh depending on uh, how much you want that pop there can be a small price of a v for vendetta <laughs> <laughs> he wants my v for vendetta pop, which actually if you look through the fun uh i should uh I'm, not, I'm surprised i didn't even mention this yet instagram at a funko popcast i shared uh uh my collection 
on there. And you might see on there, I have the Viva Vendetta in that collection, uh, which I had gotten from Pop in a Box Canada uh, for a decent price. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, March 14th is when uh, the Emerald City Comic Con pops are supposed to be up and, well, yeah, kind of like up and running on the website and uh, stores will be open that day to sell them for people who can't access the convention in Seattle. Or maybe they still live in Seattle, but they don't want to go through the hassle like we tried getting the hassle through for Fan Expo trying to get those tickets. $300 rush three pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little rough that day. Um, and now the last set of pops before... Uh, we get to our, our next uh, discussion, uh, is another spastic plastic. I wanted to say yeah. a little slower so I didn't go in a, a tongue twister. This was announced today as we as we film this. I still have a feeling something good's going to be announced tomorrow. Oh, and I'm yeah. going to miss it. It's but brewing. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, a pop is brewing. Um, so we got uh, two spastic plastic pops. One is Wolfgang. Which obviously is the one that looks like the wolf, just to be clear, obviously. Yeah. And uh, and the other, uh, which we'll discuss after, but uh, I'll just zoom in on here just to look at more of the detail. Is that a bowling ball? Yeah. Thing? Look, he's okay. got a bowling shirt. And... Okay, so that's what. Okay, what's behind his his head then? That's what I wondered today. I, I couldn't really tell. I think it's like a collar on the shirt. It just, I think it's it just, just a looks... really big, like if he was like a vampire of some sort. Yeah, potentially. Uh, and he's got, uh, I like the ripped up jeans, like if he was like human or yeah, something. Yeah. And it's just like, and the detail on like the, uh, do I call them like, like to well, toes? Yeah. Like paws. Cause it's a wolf, They're which toes. is a dog. He's like a wolf man. Yeah. Right? Wolf man's. Okay. So toes, I uh, see the one long ass nail on, uh, the finger right on the bowling ball. And yeah. then there's the teeth and the nose. It's a, it's not a bad looking pop. It's pretty good. Um, and then uh, the next one uh, is a, uh, and I know I remember seeing uh, this pop before released. I know that. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, Big Al and he's lavender uh, or purple, but I think they described it as lavender on the Funko site. Um, and he's holding uh, like a martini glass. I like the detail of that olive. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the Mart uh, yeah, in the martini glass. Uh, he's wearing a a red bow tie with like a, a white collar. He's got like looks like some sort of like graduation like cap or something like that. Like it's, a it's red a fez. A fez. That's what it's called. Okay. Well, he's wearing a fez. Uh a red fez with uh the yellow little thing that comes on top of that. Uh the tassels. There we go. Um but, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on them, since you know about the spastic plastic? I'll just give you Um, your... yeah, I mean, I like the... What did you say this guy's name was? Wolfgang. Wolfgang, yeah, right, of course. Um, I, I really like this pop. I'm, I'm definitely gonna get this pop, because it's just... It's neat. I love the ideas that Funko come up with. They, they always have original content that's really good, and, like, it's a wolfman bowling, I think. I don't know, just cool. And then the, uh... The other one is nice and detailed, but I'll probably pass on that one. Again, with the like the pastel coloring of the pink and the lavender, it, it looks nice, but I'll probably pass on that one. All right, guys. So that is the end of announcements for uh, for Funko Pops. And uh, usually, if I would have ended it like right there, this would have been the shortest podcast I've done. Except we still got the top ten pops uh to do which uh if you listen to the very first edition uh, of january and i'm gonna do this for basically every podcast depending on if i have uh or if it's done in two parts it'll be done on part two but it's always uh i'm doing the top 10 uh what i think would be the top 10 uh best announcements uh of the month and I know the January one, if you listen to it, it was more of like personal. So I think on that list I had, uh, I think in order, if I can remember, it was like uh, from 10 to 1, it would be uh, George St. Pierre, Michael Jordan, 1989 Batman, uh, Bullseye, Imagination SpongeBob, Randy Orton, Colonel Sanders. There we go. I'm getting the order right. Uh, and then number three was Electrocuted Darth Vader. Number two, Woody 
with RC Pop Rides, with number one being the Translucent John Cena, which I actually ordered on WWE Shop the other day and actually getting us to those pops. I'm going to pause you for a sec. The RC car is a January release? Yeah, I'm talking about, like, I was discussing about my, my top ten from that month. Yeah, then I'm going to have to change my top ten. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, yeah, I guess uh, Matt's got to uh, quickly change his top 10 uh, because, yeah, uh, the Toy Story lineup was the first announcement of January. Yeah, okay. Uh, is part of that announcement. Uh, but uh, I guess, uh, yeah, but then uh, I guess while uh, I'll get, I guess I'll buy him some time uh, while I talk about uh, basically uh, if I done them in the way that I... I'm going to do them today, which is more uh, between three categories of detail, overall hype from all the Funko fans, and my own personal reaction. I think now the list, it would take out Michael Jordan, um, and then it would uh, replace 1989 Batman with the uh, 1989 Batman and Joker pop movie moments, because that was very detailed and basically well done. So now that list, basically, uh, I'll probably pull up like a, a collage photo because I don't want to really add separate photos of uh, of that. So uh, that order then, I think George St. Pierre would still be number 10. And then it would be Bullseye, Randy Orton, uh, SpongeBob. And then, uh, or I think Colonel Sanders, then SpongeBob. I can't really remember. You'll see it, you'll see it on the video uh, with the, the edit. But then, uh, I think, uh, okay. Yeah. 19, I remember 1989 Batman with Joker would have been number five, four, I believe. And then, uh, I think, uh, number three. Yeah. Okay. So the top three switched, it was, uh, it would have been, why can't I remember? Oh yeah. Translucent John Cena would have been number three. Then Electrocuted Darth Vader would be number two. And then the Woody with the RC car pop rides would have been number one. Because that overall hype, that was the biggest hype pop probably of the month of January. And, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm done because I realized I didn't put that Woody RC in my top ten. Oh, it, that's it, why it you're was, like... It was just, yeah, it was just in my, <laughs> like, my, like, as I was jotting down, like, what pops were good. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. So, uh... Yeah, now uh, I don't know his list at all. I, I made sure of that. I don't know your list, and you don't know mine, because I'd yeah. like to get the reaction part of that. So now I'm going to look at my little my little list. There we go. I got it without without you looking. So uh, I'm going to start with you on, on your list, and then I'll jot down all the way to basically. Like, we'll go back and forth. Like, you'll start with 10, I'll do 10. Okay, that's then, what I was going to say. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So... Yeah. For my, I feel like our lists might be pretty similar. We'll have at least, I'd say, three or four pops that might uh, come up as the same. But I definitely have a few that you probably don't even care about. Um, so the first one, I'm going to find a picture of it here so I can explain it a little better. Is So my top ten, this is at ten, is Bartman from The Simpsons new lineup. And I, I love this pop. He's posed, which is nice, and... I'm a big fan of Bartman. I have a uh, couple of his things, you could say. And it's just, it's a really nice pop. So that's why I put it at 10. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to put Bartman on my list. Yeah. Except when I was jotting down, I was trying to be more like at, about detail and uh, overall hype. And then like my own personal, uh, and if it was just my personal reaction, like last month's Bartman would have definitely been on the list. Cause yeah. I know for a fact uh, with the Simpsons pops, one pop I always wanted was Bartman because I yeah, always enjoyed Bartman. I remember you hearing that or saying that. And, uh, but however, number ten on my list, uh, is the Emerald City Comic Con Amazon shared three pack of the Lion King. Uh-huh. Uh, those de those detailed pops are are pretty cool, and it was very hard to because I knew I think I knew a couple of uh, my. Uh, emerald city or a couple of my list uh like had to have emerald city and i think uh like some of them definitely uh 
I felt were better than the ones I had originally had for maybe like number like 10 in that. So yeah, so number 10 was the the Bonsai Shenzi and Ed 3 pack Lion King uh, pops that would be shared with Amazon and is a Emerald City Comic Con exclusive. Or as it will probably be delivered to you, it will have the sticker that says the Spring Convention exclusive. Yep. But you still know of it as the Emerald City Comic Con pops. All right, so now we got, uh, yeah, I'm going to get a nice sip of Tim Hortons. Uh, will be the number nine. All right, so my number nine is going to Gene Simmons in the new Kiss set. Reason being is because with the first pop, they didn't have his tongue out unless you got the Glow Chase, which is now $800. So, now if you want a Gene Simmons with his tongue out, you can easily get that. And he has the fire stick, which he breathes fire with in the concert, which is really cool. And the only flaw with this pop, in my opinion, is... Well, I guess there's two kind of flaws, and that would be the boots. They could they should have done the boots from the last pop with, like, the scales. I just feel like they kind of cheaped out on the boots. And I wish they had his axe guitar in this one, like the last one as well, because that's just like iconic is the word I'm looking for. But this is a great pop. I'm a huge fan of Kiss, and it's just it's in my top ten for sure. Yeah. Um, number nine on my list is the SpongeBob with Gary and the Pineapple House uh, Pop Towns. I I really like the idea that they're now executing about the Pineapple House. In a, in a pop, I think what's made it, so, for some reason, I think the thing that made it so low is Gary itself. Because when you look at the pop, like, I know that they make, like, pops with, like, black eyes. But I don't think the black eye should have been on, like, the Gary. Because uh, I don't... Pull up a picture of that. Yeah, right? if you pull up a picture. it's uh, To me, it just looks so weird. Like, yeah, uh, give him just white balls. Yeah, just give him white eyes. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, anyways yeah as we pull up a close up uh the like, gary overall is fine except like those eyes is just really same, bothering it's the same thing with spongebob too though they should have gave him white eyes as well true it's it's one of those times where like you think like why doesn't funko just actually make like eyes like but then that kind of gives away their look you know what i mean like if they put the pupils in then it's not they're going for more of like yeah, a true. If you yeah, especially point. if you want those detail eyes in like a, a figure, you just buy vinyl figures because they do that. Yeah, then. Um, but that but what's made it on the list definitely is the pineapple house because that's a very detailed pineapple house, especially the door, uh, the little chimney and the the top of the pineapple, um, everything about it, and then just SpongeBob overall. Now Matt's number eight. My number eight. I'm gonna pull up a picture real quick here is Dale Earnhardt Sr. This pop is wicked. My grandfather was a huge fan of NASCAR, and whenever I was over there, I'd always watch Dale Earnhardt Sr. racing before he passed, and uh, and Jr. And uh, it, it looks just like him. He's got his slanted mustache. He's got the glasses on. He's got the Budweiser, I believe, is who he's sponsored by. And he's got, like, his little racing jumpsuit. Uh, well, I mean, I'm trying to remember. Actually. I don't think it says on there because it's beer and they don't want to promote, like. Or, uh, no, brand, Senior, like... I think, if I'm not mistaken, if any NASCAR fans are watching, I'm pretty sure. He, oh, I forget, what the heck is the name? It's, like, Good Something. And it's not, Good like, year? Goodyear. Oh. It's, like, uh, or some sort of, but it, I don't think it's a beer brand. Huh. I think it's some sort of auto automobile brand. Oh, okay. Once again, it's gonna be have to be one of those searches like if Bill Murray plays Steve Zizu. Yeah. Type of searches. Um, um. But yeah, he he got my number eight just because this is probably the only pop from the NASCAR set I'll pick up, and that's just because he's the best. I don't know. What yeah. Else to tell rest you. in peace, uh, Dale Senior. And uh, one thing that I thought was uh, yeah, rest in peace. One thing that I thought was weird is that there's no Jeff Gordon. In this NASCAR lineup. Yeah, there is actually. Really? That's Jeff Gordon. You just don't know because he doesn't have what is Goodyear. Uh, that was his brand. That was his. That was with the, the sponsor. Okay. That, yeah, that definitely does look. Because because they always change their like, especially if you notice, obviously beside uh, on the left of Dale Senior is Dale Junior, yeah, but you don't yeah. recognize it because he doesn't have either the Budweiser uh, brand, which is what he was sponsored by, from what I remember, 
and uh he was i think it was mountain dew at one point yeah uh that was like in the later years after but i don't know what he's sponsored by now but um yeah all right so now my number eight uh you'll actually like my number eight uh surprising that it's on that list uh is the the sombra glitch oh, cool. uh emerald city comic-con uh i like the de- it's got i think the detail uh is has brought it up uh into my list especially over spongebob with that little detail that's made it go down on the list uh even though i never played overwatch it still gets up on that list because of detail it is one of the better detail pops of the month which is why i got it so emerald city comic-con uh and shared with amazon hmm. so yeah that's sombra at number eight hmm. yeah the only reason why i didn't put her on my list spoiler is because i feel like the hot topic exclusive is already a better version of that pop even though i will be getting that pop so, I don't know. There's just a lot of Overwatch variants to get. So I don't get super hyped over them, but I always know, yeah, I'm going to pick that up. Okay. Uh, now you're number seven. My number seven is the Fisherman Freddy with the Rainbow Trout. Okay, so yeah, I, the first one from... One yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I really like that pop, and I really hope I can get it, and... I've already explained that pop in this video, so you guys should uh, realize by my first reaction why that one took my number seven spot. Okay, uh, my number seven, all right, um, my number seven is Dwight Schrute from The Office. Oh. Uh, it's, I knew, I, I felt like this is more personal that yeah. got up on the list and overall hype. I knew, I feel like, uh, at the same time, like, it had to go on the list because of overall hype, mostly, and, like, and it made the list because of personal, uh, and also the detail is pretty good onto it. Yeah, if you find the photo, the second one, yep. yeah, like, if you watch the show, and then, like, you look at the pop, it's basically one of the most, more realistic television pops out there of, of a character. Dwight, it, like, I can't wait until, uh, they make different versions they're definitely i feel like office is going to be a very big selling funko pop where they'll make so many waves of it yeah like at least four yeah like uh i'm already imagining dwight as recyclops um the one i still kind of was disappointed on was jim where he doesn't have him dressed as dwight which is a very iconic episode or the whole punch jim you know what I'm talking about? I'm the trying Halloween to... The Halloween costume where he has the th- just like three yeah, circles. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, like, uh, it was hard to just say, like, uh, like to do a set, because I don't do that on my list, like, add sets uh, as in part of the, the list. But this if would probably be number one. It, yeah, like, Dwight has to be the number one out of, like, the, what looks to be seven, well, actually, technically eight, if you talk about the two-pack also of The of the Office. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Dwight Schrute, uh, it's not higher up, because there, obviously, you'll see why of the, the amount of detail and hype of the next six pops on my list. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Number seven, Dwight Schrute. Now, uh, Matt's number six. I'm just trying to find the photo of it, which okay. I guess I don't... Funko just posted a post 17 minutes ago on their Instagram, so now all the pictures where I thought they were are shifted one over. Mm, yeah, that's... Uh... Um. So my number six it is? Yeah. My number six is the Forrest Gump pop where he's holding the box of chocolates. This nice. Is, it's so iconic. There's that, I'm sure people are going to love this pop. It's going to sell really well, and Forrest Gump may be my favorite movie of all time, potentially. So I will definitely pick up both these pops, but at number six, I definitely have to put the uh, box of chocolates, Forrest Gump. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. Um, number six on my list is the Catman kiss set. Um, one thing that is, uh, has definitely brought it up on this list is the detail of the fact that uh this like i said on the last one and i'm still not sure whether i'm right or not that this potentially could be the first ever drummer pop that comes with a drum kit yeah i 
I you were explaining about the Queen pops, right? How Yeah, I don't think Queen that, has no, like doesn't. a drum kit and neither does and neither does I don't think the Rush 3 no, pack. No, the Rush 3 pack. So I think well. it's the Catman drum set, yeah. Yeah, I think it's the first pop with a drum set, which is very neat. Uh the face paint is awesome in the attire and just it, it was hard to choose like uh exactly like who was going on this list from Kiss cuz like realistically all of them should go on, but I only had to choose uh well actually you'll see on this list how many gets put into this in my list so yeah the cat man is at number six now we got matt with number five we're finally on the top five ladies and gentlemen and speaking of top five it is the first time that uh we have a pop that crossed both of our top tens and that would be the spongebob and gary with the pop town mm. with the pineapple this this is a cool pop the SpongeBob pops are awesome, and I'm super excited about the Pop Towns if they can execute it properly. And you already explained it, so I don't think there's much else that I can say about this pop. Just that it's a really nice one. Yeah. All right. So now number five on mine. It's it seems like uh, as many people know me, it's actually I think it's close by on there. Actually, no, it's more near the end on the uh, the Funko post, but. Uh, Number five on my list, it's mainly on there because of the amount of detail. And uh, it's it's something that, like, if you know me very well, you wouldn't think this would be on the list at all. But because of the way I'm doing, like, these lists now, um, it is the glow-in-the-dark chase Hot Topic exclusive Dark Phoenix uh. pop. Uh, Dark Phoenix from X-Men. And, uh, and, like, the pop, uh, you'll see on the... Uh, on the photo now about now or probably has been on there uh when you see this video uh she's got there's more than just the thing what's what makes it an awesome pop is the fact that like there's more than just like one thing on the pop that glows like i think her eyes glow i think her attire glows and i think even her hair the hair and the fire glows and uh Actually, if you're looking for yeah, the photo, um, wow, what? Yeah, no, no, I can't find it. Uh, it's right. Wow, why is it not on there? Uh, I know on my on my page it's posted. So if you, but I, uh, but anyways, so it's kind of a little bit harder to describe mostly. But I know like. There is a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of detail in the glow in the dark. Like, uh, there's more than one spot on the pop that glows, which is why it's so high, high up on the list. Uh, and overall, even if it's the normal one, it's very detailed. But the glow in the dark chase, that's a hot topic exclusive, is on is uh, <clears throat> is high up on the list. So that's my number five. We're now gonna go with Matt's number four. Okay, so I just decided to do a little switcheroo from my four and my three and also change what my three was to a different pop because I forgot to add it. But, um, so my number four was supposed to be one, but now it's, it's getting switched around. So now it was going to be Catman from Kiss, but you already added that on there and... There was one pop that I forgot to add, and that is Quavo from Migos. I know that in your your first video for this month, you... What did you call him? You called him... I might have said Quavo. Quavo, <laughs> yeah, you called him Quavo. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's Quavo. This, this, these three pops are wicked. They look just like the rapper's Migos. And honestly, the Quavo one, just, it, it looks awesome. So, that's my number four. All right, Quavo. All right, got the name right instead of Quavo. Rhy rhyming with Guavo. <laughs> or avocado. <laughs> but, <laughs> wow, are you Migos? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, right, number four, right? That's where we're on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, number uh, number four. Um, on my list, I there's not really... There's kind of a couple names to this Uh there's like I think Funko calls it one thing, and then like Entertainment Earth calls it another thing. But on my lit on my paper, it's uh, it's called Resisting Slime Pop Movie Moments. Oh, I forgot about that. So, one. so uh, nice. 
it is super detailed, especially the slime on uh, Peter Venkman's hair, uh, even the little, like, uh, do I call it lightning? I don't know what to call it from from the uh, the guns that they have, but to even like, uh, yeah, if we can find a photo. But when did uh, it get released? When did it get? Re- oh, you're you're in London Toy Fair on Funko's page. Yeah, yeah, it's it should be. Uh, but uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys, with the little dead space there. Um, yeah, the it's there's a lot of detail going on from such an iconic uh, scene. Yeah, it's in that. It's, yeah, uh, that's why. There we go, right at the bottom there. Uh, yeah, the resisting slime, or it's called, sometimes it's called the banquet room, as EB Games would call it, because it did happen in the banquet room. Yeah, the ghost trap, uh, the guns, and uh, that slimer, though, and uh, everything else. Like, it's a very detailed pop, and it's a very iconic movie moment from the Ghostbusters franchise. Yep. And uh, now we got, uh, we're going to the top three now. It's uh, very, <laughs> very hyped uh, for the top three. So uh, what do you got for your number three? So for my number three, which was previously my number four, but I put it up a space because I think it really deserved it, is another one that you had also talked about, and that is Dwight from The Office. Oh, I... Because that pop it's just it looks just like him and yeah that's what in reading comments on funko's posts like when they did that little teaser i guess of doing office space everyone's like where's the office where's the office this is all i've been hearing for months is where's the office even like with my friends that don't collect funkos they're like why don't haven't they had office pops because everyone loves the office yeah and that dwight pop is just it's a work of art. It looks just like them. I'm glad that it's high up on someone's list. I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, so now I'm moving on, I guess, to mine. Number three. Wow. Like, from this set of pop, It's from a set of pops. And it's so hard to choose between, like, the like the four of the pops. But uh, number three on my list. And it's not, it's not Kiss. Oh. <laughs> That's what... <laughs> it's, uh... It's Edgar from Men in Black. Okay. Uh, if you find the photo, uh, super super detailed, like everything. It's one of those like kind of like the comments with Dwight. Like it kind of looks exactly like like the one thing that uh, the little minor detail is that both eyes are different colors. Like even in the movie, it's exactly like that. And there's even the little holes in his face and the cockroach coming out of his mouth and. Everything about that pop is super detailed, including like he's holding the gun and he's wearing that dirty farmer attire. It's very, very well detailed. And even when these were rumored, I don't even know how many people would have thought about Edgar as a character. So I think the overall hype went pretty high for that pop. So number three on my list, Edgar from Men in Black. I I could agree with that. That's uh, It is a nice pop. It really is. I'm definitely going to pick up at least three of these Men in Black Pops. Might, yeah, might that not... Funko Shop one is going to be kind of hard to get. But... Yeah, the the common is better, in my opinion. Yeah, like, I like the... It's one of those... It's just like, uh, uh, you probably heard it in, if you listened to the January one, about how I feel the Colonel Sanders common is better than the, yes, the Funko exactly. Shop. It's like, why isn't the bucket of chicken which is so detailed like a funko shop and not just like a cane which is just a normal thing that it's you see with colonel sometimes funko wants to be nice to us other times they're like Mm-mm-mm. yeah that's just like yeah and then uh yeah especially those men in black pops like like you even got like frank uh with uh with agent j and you got agent yeah. k with freaking nebel and like the little coffee like i almost wanted to put that on my top list that yeah. pop itself but it was it was super hard but uh now we're going, oh, it's getting really close. We got number two, Ooh. number two. Number two was, at one point in this month, my favorite pop to come out and might be my favorite pop of all time, and that is Post Malone. The Post Malone pop is just so nice. I'm going to pull up the actual picture just so I can get a better uh, referencing on it. Yeah, on... Uh... Uh, when you're watching this video, it would probably just be the concept art as shown. But uh, they, if you search up the pop, it is very detailed. Like, it looks better than the concept. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, they got all of his face tattoos, which look really nice. They got his nose ring. In one hand, he has a red Solo cup and a cigarette. And it's just, this pop is hyped. I have a lot of friends that don't collect Funkos, but obviously come over a lot and see my collection. And this is one that I've heard like, oh, there's no like Post Malone pop. And finally it's come out and I've seen a lot of people on my uh, Facebook friends list like share this pop, like saying, ooh, I'm going to get this. I don't even collect Funkos. And I feel like this one, it's going to... They're going to sell a lot of this pop because it is – it's a perfect pop. And even – I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, in in the concept art, it doesn't show the the cigarette in his hand. Yeah. But in the pop itself, it actually does show the cigarette. Yeah. It's just some of those like, oh, look at it, more detail. They didn't even add in the concept art. Yeah. But like, yeah, the pop, like they – like the hype was way up for, for this pop. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially like – Looking at, like, the pop, it's like, man, they did better than what they shown in the concept yep. art. Uh, so, yeah, now number two. We're once again crossing paths. This is one we both have on our list, but mine's super high up because of hype and because of how very detailed it is better than the original. And that's the demon, Gene Simmons. I knew it! Gene Simmons, it... Honestly, if this was... Like, if I did this the way that I did January's top ten, this would be number one. No problem. Um, and, uh, like, the detail on this pop, like, like, including, like, the little, like, man bun type thing, like, not really, but it's probably just, like, a, like, a ponytail yeah, type. Yeah. The, the fire, it's way better than the norm, the original, uh, Gene Simmons demon pop. It's yeah. just, like, especially, like, I even, like, I probably said this, like, twice already of how we discussed about how we thought this new Kiss set was going to be like lick it up or psycho circus something different but they gave yeah. us the original probably in time because kiss is doing their retirement tour so or as they say retirement tour but at least we've seen them we going to see kiss this summer probably okay <laughs> <laughs> um so uh yeah um yeah the demon is number two and uh my number one like i'm not gonna say it right now but Number one definitely takes the cake with super amounts of detail. And I'll explain I'll explain when I get to number one who didn't make the list so that we don't have to. Uh, okay. So now you're number one. My number one. So And I think I know who number one is. Yeah, just you just probably I do. probably do. I'll just wait for you <laughs> just to say it. So my number one is not because of detail. It's not because of how amazing the pop looks or anything. It's just completely personal preference. And it's mostly because I was on the bus two days before this pop was released, and I was thinking, wow, I can't believe they haven't put a pop out for this person slash character yet, and that would be Jim Henson. The Jim Henson pop is awesome. I love how they have, like, in the variant, he's holding Ernie, and in for my number one, it's the common Kermit pop, just to be clear. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I love how they have like those two as the characters he's holding because he voices both of those characters and it looks just like them. And uh, like they're just awesome. And I can't believe it came out two days after thinking about it. It was just like, a, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just awesome for me. And that's why it, it made it. Yeah, it's one. like, um, like. It's one of those, inc once again, one of those incidents I thought, like, man, like, you'd think they would have made the Kermit one the chase, or the, or the exclusive, because, like, Kermit's, like, the more pop, but I guess they want to be nice to us, and... Exactly. Uh, but, uh, alright, so now I'm my number one, so I'm gonna, uh, throw some very hyped pops out of the way, uh, unfortunately, Jim Henson is not number one on my list, Bulbasaur is not number one on the list, so it didn't even make the list at all, even though... Uh, if it was a, a list of just hyped pops, it definitely would have made a top 10 list. Uh, now, also to throw out, Forrest Gump did not make the list. Um, Post Malone did not make number one. Bartman did not make number one. Uh, and that's all I could think of off the top of my head of some pops. Uh, Pet Cemetery did not make number one. Jaws did not make number one. Number one on my list uh, which, if you heard the last podcast, uh, 
in what I believe may be one of the most detailed pops I have ever seen in my life. One of. I'm not saying the. One of. And it was very hard to choose if this stayed number one or it would have been... No it would either have been number one or number two. Definitely would have been a top three choice. And that is the Death of the Family version of The Joker. Hot Topic exclusive, which would have been announced earlier in the month if you look through. Uh, it would have been in a... Do I... I don't, I don't see it right... Oh, yeah, I see it. It's right there. Ah, right. So, yeah, the Death of the Family uh, Joker pop. See, it's very hard. It's like... Like, I wanted to put Demon number one, but I couldn't because the, the amount of detail put in this pop... Like, especially the teeth, the different colored eyes, the yeah. hair, the attire, especially the little hammer that's bloody. It's just small detail like that, even though I've probably never seen, uh, like, a or read, like, a comic or, like, watched, like, a TV show that involved this Death of the Family Joker. The detail is what takes number one this month for the top ten Funko Pops of the month of February. And, uh, yeah, um, that's basically, that's basically it. Uh, I got really nothing else to say. Um, obviously this will be released March 1st and we'll talk about, uh, any, uh, pops if they get released on February 28th since it's being recorded the 27th and, uh, Next podcast will probably be at the end of March. That's usually when I like to aim like the release. So like it'll be released April 1st, but I like to record them at the end of March or the end of the month. Mm -hmm. um, just to get the overall like announcements, like the full announcements. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll see Matt next time. Hopefully we will. It's a pretty good episode today, to be honest. Yeah. One um, more uh, little segment I thought we could add is rating overall the toy fair releases and the and the um emerald city releases as like a whole like as a group like each section like one and two okay so you just rate like let's say out of like 10 or out of 10 yes. out of 10 like you would say new york toy fair reveals um so i would say seven and a half eight Seven and a half, eight on the New York Toy Fair. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one and give it a solid nine and a half. This, there is over 50 pops out of these releases that I want to get. And they just, they just did a wicked job on all of them. So that's why that one is rated so high by me. Okay. And then Emerald City. Um, four. Four, eh? Yeah. I would have to basically agree with you, but I'm going to give it a five just for... Because they, they spread it out. There's a lot of different things that they put in here that it'll widen how many people buy these pops because there's so many. Like, there's from food to TV to video games to books. There's just a lot of different pops, and but they're just not amazing. Yeah, like, especially, like, we had discussed about potentially going to Hot Topic, uh, if the weather's nice or whatever, to, to get, like, but they're, like, I don't really like the majority of the, like, the Hot Topic ones, or even the majority of them at all. I don't think I'm, like, gonna burn my wallet for Emerald City Pops. Yeah. But, uh, obviously, the New York Toy Fair reveals they'll be over time, so, like, you know, uh, parts of my wallet will be burning each month, probably. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um... So yeah, now I think yeah, this this is the end. Next time uh I'll see you guys is uh probably April 1st is when this is going to get released the next podcast. So uh <clears throat> Yeah, so April 1st um unless somehow there's a random convention that gets announced, which I don't think there is. Uh considering I thought March was going to be yeah. Emerald City. So um yeah, that's that's all. So uh Thanks for listening, and see you guys next time on a Funko Popcast. Aw, yeah.